Hi everyone. Thanks so much for joining today's webinar. My name is Melissa Steck and I'm the Marcom Manager here at Cardiolog Analytics. So I'll go ahead and kick things off. Today's webinar is on how to manage your Office 365 migration with analytics. And the goal of this presentation is that you will walk away with some key insights and metrics you can use to further improve your SharePoint or Office 365 migration. And of course, some helpful tips and actions that you can utilize to set your Office 365 improvement plan into motion. So a bit of housekeeping, this webinar is being recorded. If you want to share this with a colleague, we'll go ahead and send an email with the recording after today's session. And of course, if you have any questions, please send them through the questions box within the GoToWebinar panel. We'll leave some time towards the end for Q&A. You can also connect with us on Twitter with the Twitter handle at Cardiolog. In regards to the agenda for today's webinar, we'll start off with a very short introduction. We'll talk a bit about Cardiolog Analytics and who we are. Then I'll jump straight into the, today's topic. SharePoint and Office 365 migration. Then I'll do a demo of Cardiolog Analytics and explain how it eases your migration by measuring adoption rates, engagement, and web part metrics that give next level data and deep insights during the migration. And at the end, we'll be doing a Q&A, so feel free to send your questions throughout the course of the presentation. And so now for a brief introduction, Cardiolog Analytics has been around for about 13 years now, since 2005, and we're based out of Boston. Over the past 13 years, we've been focused on web analytics designed for SharePoint and now Office 365. Our flagship solution is Cardiolog Analytics, and it's built specifically for internal platforms, including all versions of SharePoint, from 2007 to 2016, as well as SharePoint Online and Office 365. We can also track third-party tools like Yammer, CRM tools, and the like. Our solution is available both on-prem and as a SaaS version based on Power BI. So just a little bit about our vision as a company. We've been working with our customers for over 13 years, and this slide shows our evolution. Our goal is to help our customers constantly improve SharePoint based on how it's being used. So there are three main pillars that we talk to our customers about. The first pillar is monitoring activity, which is tracking the usage within SharePoint with in-depth internet analytics, insights, and usage reports. The second pillar is engaging users, asking them what their needs are, what their pain points are, and what's not working for them. This is what we'll focus on in our presentation today. And then finally, the most important pillar is Enhance. We want to make sure we're constantly improving SharePoint based on these two pillars. The idea is to have actionable metrics, which will allow us to constantly make SharePoint better for our users. And now we're going to do a brief overview of our various analytics and employee engagement solutions. Our flagship product is Cardiolog Analytics. This is available both as an on-prem and as a SaaS solution. We will delve into how analytics can ease your migration throughout the rest of this webinar. Gamify is a revolutionary SharePoint-based gamification service, which encourages users to take action in the portal, ultimately increasing SharePoint adoption after your migration has occurred. And finally, we have Cardiolog Engage, a great interactive solution for sending internal communication campaigns across the SharePoint portal and engaging with your users. With Engage, you can connect with your users before, during, and after the migration to alert them to upcoming changes and to better understand how you can improve various aspects of the portal. So why do we need analytics to help with our SharePoint migration? The key is that we can only manage what we measure. If we don't know what's going on with our portal before, during, and after our SharePoint migration, 
we're going to see some of these challenges, like not enough training, wasting storage space because we're migrating old, outdated documents, and struggling to encourage users to adopt our new portal. By leveraging analytics, we are aware of how people are using the portal before the deployment to prevent these issues before the migration even occurs. Afterward, we have an adoption baseline rate to see if the migration was successful, measure if people are using it, and adoption is increasing by being able to measure what's going on. And that's really the end goal that we help our customers with. And KPIs fit right in with those top challenges. Some organizations may also have difficulty determining what a successful migration is and may not be aware of some of the potential issues. By leveraging analytics, you can identify KPIs and uncover key insights about your portal usage before, during, and after your migration to make your rollout a success. So before the migration, we can see our most and least popular sites, what content our users are viewing, what search phrases, what are people looking for, and surveys, which are really helpful to use before our migration to ask people what they want us to improve when we migrate. During the migration, we want to see which users are still viewing the old portal or old pages. And after the migration, we want to assess adoption of the new portal. So who is doing really well, who are our champions, and who is a bit more resistant to change or is struggling with the technology learning curve. Okay, so now I'm going to jump in to Cardiolog Analytics just to give you a better idea of what I'm talking about and how you can actually create and analyze all these reports. So here you can see Cardiolog Analytics SAS, and we do have an on-premise analytics solution as well, which is available if you're interested. Our SAS solution is displayed on Power BI and hosted on Microsoft Azure servers, and it's able to track both SharePoint on-prem and online. Cardiolog Analytics SAS comes with a set of pre-made reports that we put together to be the most beneficial to users. These are all reports that you can use to ease the process of your migration by using these data-driven insights to define your KPIs before the deployment and to monitor your adoption rate during and after the migration. So now let's just jump back into this context of our pre-migration stage. One of the most important steps to take before any migration initiative is to prepare and clean up portal sites, lists, and documents. Archiving or deleting unused content from the portal is an important step in the migration process to save time and space in the new portal. So there are a variety of reports that can be really useful in this pre-migration stage. So we're going to focus on the Portal Resources Overview Report. And this report really gives you a big picture idea of what's going on in your portal in terms of your resources, and it can really assist you in supporting your migration. So at the top here, we can see some overall metrics. So here, we can see our number of tree items was 1,414. Our number of unused items is 78. And on the right-hand side here, we can also filter by quarter and month. Uh, so let's go ahead and filter by the month of January. And since everything in the report is dynamic, we can see that when we choose January, all of our data is filtered to reflect information only on what happened in January. And here to the left, we have a chart showing our portal size. So we can see that in this demo, we've already started our migration. And some things have been moved to SharePoint Online, but a lot of data is still in SharePoint 2013. So this is a great way for us to see and track the progress of our migration process. This is also one of the many charts that let us drill down. So if we drill down into our SharePoint Online portal, we can see that our team site, for example, is the largest in the portal. And over to the right, we have our chart size by content type. 
Um, so again, since this report is dynamic, if I just click on the content type document, we can see that the majority of content on our team site is documents. And so now that we know documents are what take up the largest part of the portal, when we go to clean up our portal, we know to focus on documents when deciding what content to archive or delete. And at the bottom here, we can also see content trends over time, showing how our content creation has increased, right, or decreased over the past few months. And now I'm going to move into our more detailed portal resources report on unused content to see our content in a bit more detail. So from this large chart on the right, we see all of our content. And again, just like on the other reports, this report page is dynamic. So if we again want to focus on documents, I'm going to come over to our, again, content type chart here, click on documents, and now our table over here is going to filter to show only our content that is documents. And we can see many interesting details on this chart with one of the more important ones, page views, being highlighted. So if we look here at page views, we can easily sort this data to show us what documents are being viewed the most. And we can see it's already sorted that way. And now that we know which content is popular, we may want to link to that content on our homepage or in the new portal. So since this document list right, is very popular, for example, instead of having people wasting a lot of time clicking through the portal to try and find these documents, we can easily create quick links and we can save people time because we know these specific documents are the most popular. So if we quickly flip that around and click up here, now we're seeing our inactive content. So here we can see what has zero page views and if we, right now it's still being sorted just as documents, but if we click out of this again, we'll be able to see sites, document, pages, or more, and all of that can be visualized here. And this is all of our unused or orphan documents. So here is where we can really take action. And we can either A, get rid of these unused documents or delete them, B, update them, or C, if they're updated already and we know that this information is vital to the company, let's make it more visible so that people can access it more easily. So depending on who this content is important to, let's place it on their team site or on a home page. Another detail visible on this table is the size and owner of this content, which is really helpful when we take our next steps after viewing this data. So if we're scrolling here, we can see a lot of this content has zero page views. And some of them are really large in size. And they're actually taking up a lot of space in our portal. So with this information, we can target the owners of unviewed content that is really large directly and let them know that they have 60 days to update this content or to remove it if it's outdated. Many of our customers come to us and share insights about how long their migration processes are taking. And while there are many factors, these small steps can definitely help in speeding up some aspects of migration, and specifically as it relates to content. And that's a really simple way you can take action to start that cleanup process and to use analytics to really help you get through that process. So I'm going to jump now into the next step of our migration process, which is our during phase. So I'm going to jump uh, to our gamification tool to show you how easy it is to motivate and excite your users to interact with their new SharePoint portal. So this is our standalone tool, Gamify, which is a new way to drive productivity and adoption through a gamified user experience. It helps you to make your activities, content, and your users more visible within the internet with an end goal of boosting SharePoint adoption and productivity. 
And starting with our administrator dashboard here, we can see how admins can select the metrics they want to track based on their organization's KPIs. Whether it's to observe content through viewing and downloading documents, engage with content through likes or shares, or creating content by writing posts or updating content. And on the administrator dashboard here, we can see a report with an overview of how our groups and users are performing during the migration and what their scores are. So across the top, we have a high-level overview of likes over time, how many likes the users of the group gave over time, churn over time, the number of users who became less active in the past days, weeks, and months, ranking over time, the group ranking over time based on their score. And below the overview, you can see most adopted groups, groups with the highest scores, most adopted people in group, the users with the highest scores within the group, average group score on the right, the average score of group members combined, group engagement, the average score of the group over each month, and user ranking, the users with the highest scores within the group in a list format. And what's really nice, again, about this dashboard is that we can just select a group, for example, sales, and the entire dashboard will dynamically reflect the information specifically of that group. So during the migration, this is an easy way for us to see which users and which departments are interacting with the new portal and maybe uh, tell us that we need to give more training to those with lower scores. And if we quickly go to the user dashboard, we can see that end users are able to see their own engagement with the portal and how it compares to their peers to really encourage friendly adoption in the new portal. So I'm going to go quickly now back to our SAS report. And now we're going to go over uh, the after migration phase of the process. And we're going to use this adoption user overview report to understand this a little bit better. So here we have our adoption widget which shows our unique users and groups. And here you can actually see the departments within your user groups. And you can hover over them, as I'm doing here, and see the number of active users in the department, which we can see here for our QA department is around 77. And you can see which departments have a higher active user count and which departments have a bit less action and are more of the laggers. So here is really where you can take action and give these laggers some training to help these groups that are less active and get them to really adapt to the new environment. So that's a great way to use this information to understand where to allocate your training resources. Maybe we don't want to allocate training to every single group because it's very expensive. But here, we know which groups specifically are not adopting to the portal. We can also drill down into these groups. And you can actually see the users within the specific groups. And again, apply the same method. So some of these users may not need training whereas these less active users could definitely benefit from some additional training. So this adoption report gives us a great metric that we can use to save time and money when training. And really quickly, I'm going to show you how our third-party collaboration tool can also help you take actionable steps with the data from this adoption report. So this is Cardiolog Engage, which makes it really easy to target those inactive users. So if our adoption report shows that the sales department isn't active, we can create a targeted email campaign just for them. So we'll skip this for now and come back to it. 
but so say you notice that sales is lagging, we can send a message just to those sales users and have a campaign just for them. And this is a really useful way to make sure people are involved after the migration process and especially those lagging departments or those who are not engaging with the new portal. And another interesting feature about Engage is that we can actually choose which channel we want the message to be sent to, whether it's a phone call, text message, or in-app message within the SharePoint portal itself, as well as how we want them to be viewing this message in the portal. And we also have our advanced filter where it will be sent to the channel that they're on the most to really target those users directly and make sure they're receiving our messages. And again, similarly to the channel, we can also have our trigger be done through smart timing. So although this is a standalone tool, it's backed by our analytics to help us find the right time to trigger the campaign to make sure these users are actually viewing it. Or if we want to send a message to our sales team after they view a specific page, we can have this message sent after they scroll down on a certain page more than however percent of the page and then send this message to them about that content. And if I go back to our goals, which we skipped over before, we can also use these to help us define what our email campaign is about. So for example, we can target people to notify them where sites have moved to in the new portal or about new features that are available. And again, with the smart trigger, we can have these notifications be sent when people are on certain pages. So if they're on a site that covers a certain topic, but it's been moved to a better place in the new portal, but if more information about it has been moved to another place in the new portal, we can have it trigger to be sent when they're on this outdated page. And since it can be hard to judge the effectiveness of the new portal, we also have these helpful goals, like ask if the page was useful and ask for feedback to collect more information on the user experience. And so this was just a little bit more about how you can take action to target your users after the migration process to generate activity in the portal and collect helpful information from your users. So that was just a quick example of some of the metrics that can be provided. And we have a few minutes left until the end of our time today. So if you didn't get a chance to yet, you can go ahead and send in your question. And we'll go over those now. So let's go ahead and look at those. And I see a question from Michael. If I'm switching to SharePoint 2016, can I still use SAS to help with my migration? So that's a good question. Uh, yes, SAS is able to track both SharePoint on-prem and SharePoint online. And we have a question from Rachel. What is the licensing for SAS? So it's a yearly subscription based on the number of users being tracked. And I'd be happy to send you a link to the pricing page to get you additional information once we know how many additional users you want to track and target with these tools. And we're just about out of time, so I'm going to wrap up our session today. As a reminder, this webinar has been recorded, so we'll send out a recording tomorrow for you to share with your colleagues who are unable to attend. We invite you to visit us at cardiologanalytics.com to book your free demo of SAS, Gamify, or Engage. You can always tweet us at, at Cardiolog. And for more information and helpful tips, you can check out our blog at blog.cardiologanalytics.com. For more information, you can contact us at info at cardiologanalytics.com. And a huge thanks to everyone who joined us today and sent in their questions.